Hi, Pradvira sir. Hello, hi. Uh, I'm Lokesh from Gulte. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving us, you know, wonderful films like Lucifer, Bro Daddy, and of course, a, you know, quite spicy song like Dream Home, Wake Up Home, everything. You were there on everything. Sir, three months ago when I watched the trailer, first of all, you uh, made me experience a different kind of emotion. I felt like, you know, watching, uh, I, do, I don't know, it's not exaggeration actually. It's like watching Zim Cavazel, you know, from Passion of the Christ, so wow. that kind of feels you have given. So what exactly, you know, there are a lot of survival thrillers, there are a lot of survival and rescue thrillers, and recently Malayalam industry has given Manjimal Boys as well. So what exactly made you pick this film, sir? Because in all, in almost all the survival thrillers, it will be like, you will be lost somewhere, maybe cheated or something, you will be lost somewhere, and finally how you, you know, reach your destination or what happens to you is, a, is, gonna, is gonna be a simple story, actually. So uh, what made you, because in all survival thrillers, the element is gonna be the same, actually. So what is that? so different or what is that, you know, what made you actually pick Najib's life, you know, to be uh, translated to the silver screen? So like you rightly said, survival in itself is a very universal theme. And what appeals uh, to our conscience about survival is because it speaks on the resilience of the human spirit. Whatever circumstances you are faced with, however big the challenges are, how unfavorable the odds are, deep down the human mind has this amazing resilience, the strength to actually be able to overcome all that. So that is a universal theme that in any adaptation, any form, it always appeals to you. You're, you're right, you know, survival thrillers, survival adventures, survival films will all have a common thread running through them. But this film is not just about survival, you know. Uh, it's a very unique, uh, deeply meditative character study as well. Because there is this man who's taken from a world full of water, so Najib, before going to the deserts, he was a free diving sand miner. In the early 90s, people used to dive down into the riverbed and take sand for construction. Now it is banned, it is illegal, you can't do that now. But those days it was a flourishing industry. So that was his job, that was what he used to do. And people who uh, used to do that job, their days are like four to six hours, they're underwater. So their world is full of water. And then he lands up where even the air has no moisture. He's not given water to drink. He's not given water to wash himself. There is no water, you know. Slowly, he has no one to speak his language to. Because uh, two people who he sees, they don't know his language. He doesn't know their language. Slowly, he stops speaking. He stops, he begins to lose the ability to articulate. He can no longer form a sentence. And then three years later, when you see the person in the film, you realize that, He's actually now probably more animal than human. Because for three years, he's only been with the animals. He's only interacted with them. He's only lived with them. The only living creatures he's been speaking to are the animals, the goats and the camels. So that metamorphosis is, I think, very unique to Najib's story. I don't think there has been another story said in the world where a human mind and a human body goes through that kind of a physical, physiological, mental, and emotional metamorphosis through the character arc. So that was very interesting for me. Yeah. Sir, but while doing the physical transformation, you know, there's just a lot of uh, star heroes and star heroines, whenever they're putting on weight and losing weight, they're actually going through a lot of health complications. So, but what made you take the risk and, you know, take up 31 kilos, losing, putting on weight, gaining weight, and again losing 31 kilos is no joke, actually. No, so it's not a joke. Yeah, <laughs> didn't you worry about the, you know, health complications that might arise? Yeah, I did. See, in 2009, when Blessy Sir offered me the film, I was still a very young actor, okay? Very young actor, trying to find my space in the industry. I was doing fairly well for myself, but still I was trying to find my space in the industry. And Blessy Sir was uh, the most coveted director in Malayalam industry, he even today is. Every actor, every actress wants to do that one Blessy film at least. He's like that to us. I don't know if you've seen his other films. If you haven't, you should, okay? You should see all his films. So at that point in time, a director known for um, eliciting fantastic performances from great legendary actors. Like his first film was with Mamuka, uh, second film was with Mamuka again, then he did films with Mohanlal sir. All of them have, in fact, even some of Mamuka's, Mamuti sir's and Mohanlal sir's best performances are in the, in, 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 you know, recent history, is often Blessy films. So such a filmmaker, for his dream film, for the most complex character that he has ever created, or he has ever adapted, comes to a young actor, and tells me, I want you to do this. So immediately I know the whole industry is jealous of me. Uh, I would be jealous of somebody who got this opportunity to do Najib. 
so what is the one thing that i should promise myself that i will not let anyone see the film and say i could he could have tried more he could have put in some more effort either i do the film or i don't do the film i decided to do the film when i do something i do it 120% so what is sir what is the source of inspiration sir to accepting these kind of scripts uh, um so basically it's a deep love of cinema uh, because i don't know anything else in life i'm 12th standard pass actually no other further qualification i know other no other job if i don't have films there is no company that will hire me because i have no qualification okay so my whole life is about cinema only i have a deep love of cinema uh secondly um, it's a very very inspiring true story you know and wonderfully adapted for the screen by blessy sir and thirdly like i said the most coveted the highest paid director of malayalam industry is telling you that for the next 16 years whatever happens i am going to be behind this one film because this is my dream film and he's chosen you is you know he's uh, picked you for the main responsibility of that vision so what further inspiration do you need you know it's that very big inspiration actually sir what would be the major changes uh, to observe yourself after completion of this journey uh, sir when i said yes to the film i was not married i was not a father i had not turned producer i had not turned director i had not turned distributor i was what 25 years old 24 years old you know so life has changed <laughs> for the past so many years uh, so many phases of my life i have traversed through and and the one constant is aadi jeevitham is happening aadi jeevitham film is happening so i i keep saying you know on the 28th of march for me it is not a film release it is like one big chapter of my life culminating so let's see <laughs> sir can we expect the film to go to any you know, oscars and or some other bigger platforms where you you can like bring us one more award because you have you already have a rahman sir and rasul pukuti the two oscar winners so we really hope so we really hope that uh, of course i mean going to the academy uh, acad- vying for an academy award and all also entails a lot of other things like a very big campaign we have to now set up a campaign for the film etc uh, in all honesty all the money we had we have put into making the film that is a truth so now hopefully when the film releases some big studio or somebody will see the film and tell us uh, yeah someone like yeah ravi garu somebody will tell us sir you have to do an do a proper los angeles campaign and maybe jimmy can help us uh because uh, the, that is i'm being very honest here huh? like uh, the, this uh, this is a very very expensive film for malayalam for telugu it's okay for malayalam it's a very very expensive film in fact probably the most expensive film ever made in malayalam so we really don't have any more money <laughs> maybe uh, sir maitri ravi sir will put in will yeah, yeah all hopes on ravi sir <laughs> <laughs> sir uh, i'd like to talk to blessy sir uh sir actually you know you you selected a finest actor and all but when we are talking about budgets uh, the moment you see the trailer you feel like okay this is all shot in the desert so why did it actually need you know 80 crore budget to be put in uh, is it like you spent more on the quality sound or is it because of the visuals or you had you used any vfx actually we first we think to start the desert in rajasthan but uh, we can found any uh, deep desert there and also uh, the gods are very uh, different in uh, arabian gods and indian gods are like, like that so many uh, herders was there uh, and also in 2018 uh, money value for us dollar was only 60 rupees i think i think i think in that was only in 16 now is 82 83 85 like that so that fluctuation is also affected and we spend lot of money uh, for the covid situations and all and also we found very beautiful location in we shot in Uh, desert around 150 days so that all are very expensive and you know uh, mr a r rahman rasul pogotti 
uh, all technicians are uh, very good technician in india itself so uh, understood sir uh, sir ravi sir సార్ మీరు ఆల్రెడీ ఇప్పుడు గోట్ లైఫ్ ఒక మనం వస్తున్నాయి నేను ఏప్రిల్లో ఐ థింక్ యూఆర్ లిసింగ్ మంజుమల్ బాయ్స్ యాజ్ వెల్ అది ఇంకా డేట్ అనుకోలేదు సార్ అది అది కూడా సేమ్ సర్వైవల్ అండ్ రెస్క్యూర్ తెల్లర్ యువర్ ఫ్యాన్ ఆఫ్ దట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ జోనర్ సార్ సార్ వీఆర్ బేసికలీ ఫ్యాన్ ఆఫ్ మలయాళం ఫిలిమ్స్ అండ్ అంటే కంటెంట్ రిచ్ ఫిలిమ్స్ అండి నాట్ నెసరీ ఇది ఇదే ఇదే అని చెప్పకూడదేమో కానీ ఇదైతే అందరికీ నచ్చేది ఏంటి అంటే నిజంగానే కంటెంట్ రిచ్ ఫిలిమ్స్ దట్ కమ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ మలయాళం ఇండస్ట్రీ అనేది ఒక ఓపెన్ ఫ్యాక్టే వీ లవ్ దోస్ ఫిలిమ్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో మంజిమల్ బాయ్స్ కూడా వీ వర్ ట్రయింగ్ ఫర్ దట్ ఫిలిమ్స్ ఇన్స్ ఎ లాంగ్ టైమ్ అండ్ అగైన్ హోప్ఫుల్లీ వీ మే డూ దట్ అండ్ దిస్ ఫిలిమ్ రన్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ సఫిషియెంట్గా సరిపోయినాకే దెన్ వీ ఆర్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు రిలీజ్ ద థింగ్ పృథ్వీరాజ్ గారితో ఏమైనా స్టాండ్ అలోన్ ఫిల్మ్ ఏమైనా ప్లాన్ చేస్తున్నారు సార్ డెఫినెట్గా సార్ ఆ ఛాన్స్ రావాలి కానీ షూర్ షాట్ యు నో వన్ థింగ్ వీ హ్యావ్ మిస్ హిమ్ ఇన్ సమ్ వెరీ వెరీ బిగ్ ఫిలిమ్ బట్ ద థింగ్ ఈస్ ఓకే అండ్ అగైన్ వీ యూస్ టు అప్రోచ్ హిమ్ అంటే పృథ్వీరాజ్ గారు సి అంటే ఆయన గురించి మనం కొత్తగా చెప్పుకునేది ఏమి లేదు ఎన్ని ఎన్నిసార్లు చాలా చాలా ఆటలు ఉన్నాయి సార్ మ్యామ్ <laughs> had gotten in touch with me to play a role in Saira Narasimha Reddy. And uh, I was very flattered because Chiranjeevi sir thinking of me for a big role is for me like a big certificate, you know. Uh, so that time I told him, really sorry sir, you know, I would love to have worked with you but I've just committed to this, I've just started, not committed, I was beginning to shoot this film that I've been waiting for for 10 years. So I have to grow my beard and lose weight and all that. And sir told me no problem and he understood. I think four years later when uh, I had become a director, I had directed one film and that film released and it had become a hit in Kerala. Chiranjeevi sir had bought the rights to that film. And also, Saira Narasimha Reddy was releasing. So, for the Kerala event of Saira Narasimha Reddy, when Chiranjeevi sir came, I was the chief guest for the event. Um, so, at that time, Chiranjeevi sir's team uh, was pitching the idea, asking me, why, why don't you think of directing uh, Lucifer in uh, Telugu also? then i am telling chiranjeevi sir sir i would have loved to sir but unfortunately there is big film that i am doing sir for which i have to grow my beard i have to do and he's like hey four years ago you said the same story <laughs> that actually happened and i had forgotten that i had told that same excuse uh, but uh, i hope chiranjeevi sir's team has uh, conveyed it as actually true uh, but no chiranjeevi sir actually you know um, uh, he's such a sweet person uh, he messages me uh, he once in a while and um, you know he, he keeps in touch so does ram and he messaged me the day godfather released uh, and uh, yeah and i'm i'm hoping someday i'll be able to work with him yeah good luck sir all the best for the thank film. you thank you so much prithviraj sir here here center where a center okay yeah hi <laughs> i'm anjali from tfpc Hello, i have hi. a two questions for you okay uh, first one is the goat life <coughs> so as you say it's a true story and uh, every breath is very important yeah. so me telugu you can understand sir i can i'm beginning to understand uh, like okay yeah. uh, so uh, as you say that uh, so much things are changed in your life yeah. during this movie shooting so the most uh, painful struggle of film industry ante em cheptaru me life lo of the film industry yeah in your journey i i have had i have had no struggle madam the most painful struggle for the film industry are the people waiting outside to get in you know waiting for that first opportunity i know i am very lucky i have got my first opportunity because my father was a famous actor not because i was very talented and all you know okay. uh, like i'm a nepo kid <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, generally no one is using that nepo kid yeah, but I you also are don't, saying that nepo nah, kid that's a terminology that it's now coined no i also don't but the fact is that my first film i got because my father was a famous actor only uh, but uh, i got only my first film because my father was a famous actor But after you're, that it is my hard work <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah. true and my second question is all about uh, uh, salar prabhas garu uh-huh. so uh, everyone says that prabhas garu gives a very good food to everyone yeah. so bonding with uh, your bonding with him i'm anyone? going no in 2 hours i'll be there having food with him 
any particular item? I'm in Hyderabad, then definitely I'll be hanging out with him only. So, evening I'm going. <laughs> oh, party, sir? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. And all the best for the movie, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. Prithigaru. Whenever you felt that uh, while doing these kind of roles, whenever you felt that why I would choose this role, uh, so much pain is there, a lot of changes are there, uh, your look is, very painful look is there. Whenever you felt that why would I, I, would, I wouldn't have chose this role? Never, sir. I have, in the beginning of few months, I questioned why this role chose me. I have never questioned why did I choose this role because uh, it's a privilege for an actor, you know. Uh, you don't get films and roles like this. Even if you could say, I've done what? I've done 100, 120 films now as an actor. I've directed, I'm directing my third film. I've produced, I don't know, 10, 11 films. But films like these don't happen very often. Like once in a lifetime film. So when I get, if you get an opportunity as an artist, forget as an actor, as an artist, any craft, to be involved with a piece of cinema like this, then you don't question that. I never questioned it. But both of us had that moment of fear when we had to stop shoot in 2020 following the pandemic. Because already we had invested so much effort, so many years of struggle. I had lost one third of my body, more than one third of my body weight and we had to stop shoot and we didn't know if we were ever going to be able to restart. But we could and here we are. So, so are there any satires or criticism about the uh, Arab uh, sheikhs or uh, Arab countries? So that one very important thing I want to tell you about this film is that this is not about going to another country and getting stuck. The actual core element of the story can happen to anybody anywhere. It's about uh, forceful confinement. It's about forced labor. It's about taking away a man's identity from him. So that can happen to anyone anywhere if you are unfortunate enough to be going through those circumstances. In Najib's story, it involved him going to, a to the Gulf. It needn't be that it has to happen in the Gulf. It can happen anywhere in the world. Okay, sir. All the best. Thank you. Prudina, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Tra the trailer is very heart wrenching and emotional S journey. Emotional sorry, sorry. Trailer is looking very heart wrenching and uh, emotional journey. Thank you, thank you. So, did you feel ever the scene acting this film? So, very claustrophobic uh, audience to feel that uh, your uh, your acting is very uh, pointing. So, the, the, the taking the another world the audience is very impact of this film. I am. I I think I understood your question. So, I'm going to answer the to the question that I understood. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very intense film. Yeah, that uh, It's a very intense film. This is not a film where you have a separate uh, comedy track for relief and all. But I think cinema has generally moved on from that, no? I don't think now, even for a commercial film, I remember even when I, in, for my own films, like in early 2000s and all, we used to read a script and then it'll be like, oh, scene 23, comedy, scene 24, next. Eh? So then the comedy scene would be written later by the artist also involving in because that scene would have no relationship with the rest of the plot. That is now not there in any film, I think. Anyway, there is no like relief track to make the audience feel uh, good about themselves, etc. But mm. this is a film where I don't think you would want to take your eyes off the screen. Because uh, basically, the book is a very, very detailed 43 chapter long documentation of what this man went through. And even the book, that big book, if you if you ever read the English version at least, it will be very difficult for you to put the book down. It's very, very difficult. You talk to uh, people who have read R.G. with them, 99 out of 100 people will tell you, I started and I didn't stop till I finished. It's actually very difficult to put the book down. That big book itself is like that. And the film is a concentrated version of that book. So I don't think you'll ever want to you know, want the story to go away. I think you'll want to stay in the intensity. I think you'll, that's what I said. It's a very deeply meditative character study. You'll just want to keep traveling with this character. And uh, that is because of the way he has made the film. Okay. I mean, an actor, since I am a director also, it will sound very immodest and not nice in me saying this. But since I'm an actor also, I think I can say, uh, whatever an actor does, we are limited by our directors. So only a great director can make an actor look good. Sir, sir, there is a, there is a lot of survival, sir, sir, lot of survival thrillers you know, in, in more Bollywood or Tollywood or Hollywood. Hollywood so, so the, you see, you see the life of five bookies also they converted to silver screen. So the the, the movie also survival in a C. Mm -hmm. uh, what in your book, your movie also same thing to survival thing. I think I already answered that question, the gentleman's question. So yeah, Prithvira sir, yeah. Yes. So, uh, Audujutam is the best seller in the Malayalam. 
Yes. So what is the need of telling on silver screen? What is the moral of the movie to tell the audience? Moral? Yeah. It is this, sir. It is this that, you know, uh, like yesterday, we had this wonderful uh, program in Cochin, where uh, as part of, uh, as a tribute to the, uh, I mean, as part of the promotion, we were paying a tribute to 30-odd uh, survivors, people who have survived very difficult circumstances in life. So all of them actually shared their stories with us during the program. And one thing that struck us that Blessed Sir actually rightly said uh, during the program was that we are going through a time and phase where I think in general, the human spirit and the strength of the human mind is becoming very fragile. We read so many sad stories you know, of uh, like somebody um, uh, fell in love and couldn't get married and so they suicided. You know, so, so many stories of people giving up on life. I think in a world like that, in circumstances like that, a story like Najib's is the ultimate beacon of inspiration. What Najib fought through, what Najib survived, you know, if he can do that, and this is not fiction, this is a real life, that man is there, he's alive and well. If he can do that, one 10 standard fail, one love failure and all is nothing. You know? So that is the biggest lesson. Sir, when you stuck in the desert at the COVID period, what was going in, you, in your mind? Hunger, sir, hunger. I was always hungry. I was not eating food only. Because I had to be like this, no? Everybody was eating biryani and all. Nothing for me, actually. Pradira, sir, here. Good to see you. Uh, there is a film called Cast Away. Yes. Uh, did you watch that film? Yeah, many times. Uh, uh, till the date, uh, that was my favorite film. Yeah. I hope 28th March, this is my favorite, I hope. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's what what uh, would you say about Cast Away and uh, the goat life, RG with them? Yeah, so like, like he asked, no, I mean, they are both survival uh, stories of people having to fight circumstances, fight solitude uh, and hold on to sanity and survive. Uh, the difference is the character metamorphosis, I said, you know. Uh, it is one thing being alone, talking to a volleyball. It's one thing being so desperate in your solitude that you subconsciously try and be one among the animals so that you feel like you are in a society. You know? and that's a very interesting character arc. I don't know if there is any other story that speaks of such a metamorphosis. Have you adopted any uh, characteristic transformations from that character, castaway character? No. So, I mean, I used to Google every possible actor's transformation to see what did each person do. Like, uh, what did Christian Bale do for Machinist and uh, what did Tom Hanks do for Castaway? Uh, what did Vikram sir do for I? You know, I. Yeah. All these I used to, um, Vikram sir, then I could speak directly also. But the thing is, no, I mean, you can't adopt what somebody else did because your body might not respond to it. So, uh, ultimately, my transformation was based on literally not eating, which means fasting. So I used to fast, I used to fast for sometimes up to 72 hours. I will not recommend that to anyone. I'm, I'm, I know that there are studies that say fasting is very beneficial for your, you know, but I'm not an expert. So please consult a doctor and all before you do it. I had a doctor, I had a doctor, a nutritionist, a trainer, everyone taking care of me. Actually, uh, IPL season is running in. Yes. What's your favorite IPL team? You know, many people have asked me this, but uh, unfortunately, I think I'm very old generation. I'm still yet to come fully in terms with franchise cricket. Like, because I like Dhoni, I'll support CSK, but I like Kohli also. So when CSK is playing RCB, I don't know who to support, you know. Yeah, but I, I like international cricket. I'll support India. Yeah. Okay. Sir, please, sir. One last question, please. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Before Bahubali, we don't know the term of the pan-Indian release. Mm. But after the Bahubali, the doors open, open for the Telugu release. And after the KGF, the Kannada doors are open. And do we feel that this is the one film that opened the doors for the Malayalam industry to think big, to reach wider aud audience? Sir, actually, you know, uh, Bahubali is that singular phenomenon that got all of us talking. Uh, but I think it will always have to be a process. I don't think that one film can actually... Uh, make a change. When Bahubali 1 happened, all of us thought it is once in a lifetime. It will never repeat itself. Then Bahubali 2 happened. 
so then we thought it is only bahubali franchise that can do this then kgf happened so it will have to be a continuous process for cinema to grow beyond its own boundaries so now manyamal boys has happened it has found widespread acceptance in multiple states premalu has found a big acceptance in multiple states theatrically so maybe aad jeevitham will follow it up the next malayalam film will follow it up so it will have to be a slow process at least today we are in a position where i am sitting with ravi garu and maitri is presenting my film i have to tell you 5 years ago when a film released when a malayalam film released if you ask me who is distributing your film in hyderabad i wouldn't know i really wouldn't know because our systems and networks was like that we, would, we used to sublet we used to give rest of india to one person he used to then give it to different people hyderabad city one person uh, vizag another person it was like that and it will be like two screens here one screen in vizag so 5 years ago i'm not talking about 25 years ago 5 years ago if you had asked me uh, which theater in hyderabad city is your film playing i wouldn't know today i'll ca- i can give you the whole theater list because ravi garu is taking care of me so okay. sir one more question to you as an, as an actor also director and from the 16 years you're on board for this film but i love the as an audience i love the one song that hope and whatever happens in our life we all we have always on the hope but what is the hope as an actor you have and what is the hope you have as a director to motivate to bring to you as an audience so right now my only hope is that 28 this film is a super hit that is that is my only hope actually <laughs> ah ah so uh, sir goat actually we uh, the the name of the book and the film in malayalam is aad jeevitham uh, which literally translates to goat life when you translate it word by word it means goat life but we found it very uh, very charming for lack of a better word that the gen z new age english lingo um, goat is also an acronym for greatest of all time you know so if you want to read it as the greatest of all time life i think it's quite plausible because i truly believe najib mohammed's life is one of the greatest of all time lives wow amazing thank you thank you so much media friends for this yeah he was asking me sure he was with us for the promotions yesterday in cochin we'll bring him najib ka we'll definitely bring yeah ओके सो नजीब गार कोड जॉइन अव बोतना रनमट प्रमोशंस की थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच मीडिया फ्रेंड्स एंड थैंक यू सो मच पृथ्वीराज सर एंड ब्लेसी सर एंड जिमी सर टू फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड यस मार्क द डेट गाइस मार्च 28th इन थिएटर्स द गोट लाइफ एक ब्यूटीफुल एक्सपीरियंस ने इमोशन ने मानक अंदेंचडान के वचेस्ता उंदी सी यू ऑल इन थिएटर्स थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी